Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we'll understand how to run Sarima models in R. Box and Jenkins first introduced Arima models, the term deriving from AR is autoregressive, I is integrated, MA is moving average. Sarima, which stands for seasonal autoregressive integrated moving average, is a time series forecasting model that extends the Arima model to account for seasonality in the data. You can see in the graph given below the seasonality in the data. This data is for the airline passengers. The time period is from 1949 to 1961. You can see the seasonal fluctuations in the data. A Sarima model contains two components, usual Arima component and a seasonal component. It is specified as Arima P, D, Q, small letters, Sarima P, D, Q, S, the capital letters, where Arima P, D, Q, PDQ is the usual ARIMA component and SARIMA PDQS is a seasonal component. The small letters PDQ stands for P is autoregressive lags, D is order of integrations, Q is a moving average lags. Capital letter PDQS stands for P seasonal AR lags, D seasonal differences, Q seasonal MA lags as length of seasonal cycle. Now, when we have to use the Sarima model, basically, whenever your data consists of seasonal fluctuations, we use the Sarima model. Let's take the example. Imagine you are running an ice cream stand and you have been keeping a track of your daily sales ice cream over the past few years. You notice a clear pattern. Sales are higher in the summer months, June, July and August, and lower in the winter months, December, January and February. This repeating pattern suggests a seasonal component in your time series data. Now you want to predict the future sales to help with inventory management and staffing. This is where Sarima can be useful. The model can take into the account the seasonality in your sales data and make more accurate predictions for each month. For instance, if you specify Sarima 1, 1, 1, this one is for AR, first differencing, and this one is for MA. So these are all Arima components. Now let's talk about the, sec uh, the second bracket. SAR, seasonal AR, seasonal differences, and seasonal MA, 12 is the length of the cycle. It means that the model considers the last month sales, differences the data, and includes both autoregressive and moving average components, while also considering the seasonality with the period of 12 months. What is the difference in ACF and PACF of the normal data or the data which is having a cyclic pattern. Uh, let's talk about the left hand side first. If uh, the data does not consist of cyclic pattern, your ACF is geometric and PACF will have a spike or it can be vice versa. ACF is having a spike and PACF is geometric. But if your data is having a cyclic pattern, you can see the cyclic pattern in ACF and PACF also. Just see this. The cyclic pattern. Here also see the pattern. This indicates that you will have to apply the Sarima models in such scenario. Now, how we can run Sarima in R? Let's see. So for this, we'll go in R. The first thing which we have to do is import the data set. Click on environment, import the data set from Excel. The reason for activating the Excel option is that my, my data is in Excel format. The name of the data set is Passengers 1. Click Open. Press Import. So the first column consists of the date and the passengers, number of passengers. Now we will attach this data set into R. To run any analysis in R, it's necessary that we create the script. So for this, you click here and activate the R script. I've already created one. All those who want to work on autoregressive moving average and autoregressive integrated moving average model kindly refer my previous video. So we'll start with the first thing that is attach passengers one. This is the name of the data set. Attach passengers one. Now, in this data set, the passenger 
is a variable passengers is a variable Rem remember passenger one is the name of the data set passenger one is the name of the data set and passengers is a variable so please don't get confused when we are running the code okay let's proceed further we'll have to convert this data set into the time series object how we can do it so we are giving a new name to this data set data ts ts stands for time series passengers now this is the name of the variable not the data set start so the starting date of this data set is 1949 let's check it yeah it's 1949 increment of one month frequency 12 run now we'll plot this so plot data ts type we want line give the main title to this plot as airline passengers from 1949 to 1960 the width of the line is 2 and the color uh, from 1 to 10 you can select any colors and run on right hand side see the trend now we will have to check the stationarity of this data set and for this we require the package that is T series so go in tools install packages make sure your internet connection is on so right down here T series it's a time series click here and press install so the package will be loaded now activates this library by the command line library T series run now we want to check the stationarity of this data so our null hypothesis is series is non-stationary or in other words series has a unit root alternative series is stationary we are running the augmented dk fuller test so adf dot test will write down the name of the data set that is data ts which we got from here alternative hypothesis is stationary run and see the p value our interpretation is as the p value is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis which means that the series is stationary now we'll have to understand the concept of decomposing the time series so let's go back to the ppt again decomposing a seasonal time series into its const uh, in into its constituent components trend seasonal and residual provides a valuable insights into the underlying patterns and variations present in the data the decomposition is typically done using the maths methods like seasonal trend decomposition using LOESS STL or seasonal decomposition of time series STL decomposition. Decomposing a time series allows you to model and forecast each component separately. So the entire uh, series gets divided into trend, trend component, seasonal component and residual component. Trend component helps to identify the long term movement or the direction for time series knowing that the tra trend is crucial for making prediction and understanding the overall behavior. Seasonal component captures repeating patterns or fluctuations that occur at fix, uh, fixed intervals such as daily, monthly or yearly. This information is vital for understanding seasonality and making seasonal adjustments. Residual components represents the random noise or irregularities not explained by the trend or seasonality. It can provide insights into the usual events or outliers. Importance of decomposition. Seasonal decomposition helps remove the seasonal component from the original series, resulting in a seasonal adjusted series. This is important for comparing data across different time periods without the influence of the seasonality. Adjusted data can be useful for identifying underlying trends and making comparisons across seasons or years. Anomaly detection. By examining the residuals, one can identify anomalies or irregularities in the data that may require the further investigation. Unusual events or errors in the data collection process may manifest as spikes or dips in the residuals. Decomposing a time series aids in the selection of an appropriate model for each component. For example, trend can be modeled using the regression techniques, seasonality using the Fourier series, or the dummy variables and residuals can be modeled as a white noise visual interpretation 
The decompose components are often easier to visualize separately, making it simpler to communicate and understand the various aspects of the time series. In summary, decomposing a seasonal time series into trend, seasonal, and residual component enhances our understanding of the data, facilitates improving forecasting, allowing allows for the seasonal adjustments, aids in anomaly detection, helps in choosing the appropriate models and provides a clear visual representation of the underlying pattern. Now let's see how we can do the decomposition in R. So let's go back. We want to decompose our time series data, data TS. So the name of the object is DC. That is decompose. It's a name which we are giving. The command line is here. Decompose data TS type is additive run. Now plot this. So plot DC color. You can select from 1 to 10 any color and this is the line width run. And on right hand side the decomposition has been done. This is observed. This is trend. This is seasonal. And this is random. Now we'll plot the ACF and PACF of this time series. So run it, ACF. Just see the cyclic pattern. Okay, run PACF. And here also you'll be able to see the cyclic pattern. So it is clear that we will have to use the Sarima models. What is our interpretation? This confirms that we will have to use Sarima models as ACF and PACF are cycling now to run sarima models we'll use auto.arima command available in the forecast package so let me increase the, view, the size okay we want the forecast package go in tools install packages make sure your internet connection is on forecast write it down forecast click here press install Activate its library, library, forecast, run. What is the command line? So we are creating a new series, uh, a new object. We are creating a new object, arima fit. Command line is auto.arima, data ts. This is from here, data ts, this one. Then we are using the approximation is false. False means it will generate all the combinations. It will run all the combinations possible. Press statistics if you require. Information criterion. The selection of the models will be done on the basis of the Akai K information criterion. Test is KPSS. Run it. Can you see all the combinations are checked? And the best model has been uh, selected based on Akai K information criteria. Now we want to have the summary of this new model. So summary. Arima fit, which we created here. Run. Now we are having a MA1, SAR1 values. We are having the KIK information criterion. This interpretation we will see later on. Now let's check the Arima orders. The command line is Arima order, Arima fit. It gives me uh, the ER component, differencing, MA component, SAR component, seasonal differences, and seasonal MA. Now we want to do the forecasting for 1962. See, at present, our data consists of the last value is till 1961. Let's check. So, Our last data is till 1960 and we want to do the prediction for no our last data is till 1961 and we want to do the prediction for 1962 we'll use uh, we'll create a new object forecast 1962 forecast model we'll be using is arima fit and 10 months ahead see our data is in month so h is 10 means 10 months ahead run run we got the forecasting for january to october let's say that we want for 12 months run 
okay so it gives me for 12 months the forecast this is the prediction at 80 percent confidence interval and this is at 95 percent confidence interval now we'll plot this by the command line plot plot forecast 1962 run and just see it gives the prediction now we'll also have to check the residuals of this model so the command line is resi this is the name of the object command is residuals arima fit run residuals are created now we'll check the this residuals with the help of acf and pacf basically there should not be any spike in this correlogram run so there is no spike it means or in other words there is uh no vertical bar is crossing this blue dotted lines which is quite good our model is stable estimates are efficient again run pscf here also here one spike has gone out it's not considered to be the good thing let's proceed further now we'll interpret this model the model was here Yeah, here is it, MA and SAR1. The name which, will, which we will give to this model is Sarima 011210. What is the interpretation? It consists of non-seasonal component, Arima 011. So first differencing has been done and MA component is there. MA the, the coefficient is minus 0.3634, which I, we got from here. Interpretation, the coefficient represents the impact of one period lag of the residual series. It's a MA term. After differencing on the current value, in simpler terms, it indicates how much the current value is influenced by the previous period's forecast error. Okay. Let's talk about the seasonal component, which is 210. 210. So there are two terms of SAR because it is two, so SAR1 and SAR2, uh, seasonal differencing has been done. This coefficient represents the impact of seasonal autoregressive terms at lags 12 and 24 on the current value. In this context, it suggests how much the current value is influenced by the values from the same season in the previous, in the previous two years. So this was all about uh, running Sarima models in R. For more videos on econometrics using R, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also join me on different social medias. Link given at the description box.